And I am so happy to be back with you today. It feels like it has been a while. It's probably just been a, a week or so, but it feels like a long time. So I am happy to be here. I'm excited about the project today. I did want to let you know that uh, the Ornate Peacock has been restocked. So if that is a, a collection that you missed out on when it was originally launched, you'll want to hurry over to the website and grab yours while you can. So as of last night, they were, there was still available. So uh, do do run, check that out. If that's something uh, you'd like to have before they're gone. All right. So today's project was so much fun to make and I hope that you enjoy it as much as I have. So let's switch the camera and see what we're going to make. All right here. There we go. I'm also just going to refresh over here, see if I can get your comments. If you're here with me this morning, do uh, pop in there and say hello and let me know where you're from. And I would love to hear what uh, you're working on in your craft room today. All right. So here's our project. And it is uh, a fairy village nestled in a field of sunflowers so it is a dimensional card it's got a stand back here in the back and it, it uh, kind of uh, a zigzag bottom there but uh, i'll show it to you from the side so you can see how that all works and i am going to show you how this all comes together uh, good morning diane from canada i'm glad you're here with me all right, so before uh, we go any further, let's take a look at the products that we're going to use. Okay, so of course, to, to make our field of sunflowers, we're going to use the Rustic Sunflower Collection, and I'm going to be using only the smallest one. All right, so it, just these smallest ones right there, that's the only ones we're going to be using. Then I'm also going to be using every single one, like one of each, of all the mushroom cottages. Hello, Sylvia. I'm glad you... Oh, you're working on Christmas cards. I'm excited to get started. I've only done a few, but I, I'm excited to get started on mine. So the mushroom cottage, this piece, we're going to be using our little fairy. We're going to use three of the little fins. And then this little piece right here, I made... I think I made like three... I, just three or four. You just need a handful of these to kind of fill in around your flowers. I didn't make leaves, so this is what I used for my greenery. Then I also used uh, one of the mushrooms, and I made three of the little bumblebees. Now, this is a really fun set, and if you don't have this, I encourage you to pick this up. It is the, the Rustic Sunflower Can and Freezer. And it comes with two of the, the sunflowers with the stems. And we're going to use several of those. So I just made a couple of the big ones and um, maybe three or four of the small ones. Use that. And here as an oldie but a goodie are decorative pocket accents. We're going to use this one right here. Sylvie says she loves her mushroom cottages. Yes, I do too. They're, I love to pull them out. They're so fun to color. I could just color them all day. Now for the uh, sunflowers, we are going to use the rustic sunflower shaping mold. So to make this card, I think I used every archival ink that I have in my collection. But for our demonstration today, I'm just going to do a few. So I'm going to stand our card up over here. So I've just stamped out a few and I stamped the, the sunflowers in the golden rod. I believe I used fern for my greenery here and the leaf green for this one. Our coffee color, or the brown here for all of the mushrooms. I did all the mushrooms in the same color uh, as far as the stamping. My, my little bumblebee, I stamped in black, and my fairy, I went ahead and stamped her in the vibrant fuchsia. Now, of course, um, the, the supporting pieces there, you could stamp those in any color that you wanted to. The, the fence and uh, things, I stamped those all in brown. So I'm just going to show you a few of the techniques that I used to do my coloring. And... I did all of the coloring on this card. I did with just my daubers and a few makeup brushes. Okay, so um, you, you can achieve a really uh, fun look 
with, with just your daubers. So I, for the sunflowers, I put a dark center and then I just swiped around like this. And again, just a dark center and a quick swipe around. And then I added the rest of the color once they were die cut. Now, while I have my goldenrod out, I'm going to add just a little bit to my fairy's hair and then a point right here on my bumblebee. Just going to do his body in yellow. So hopefully you can see that all right. Hello, Anna. So what is everyone else? So uh, Sylvie said she's working on Christmas cards. What? Anybody else working on anything in their craft room? All right, let's go to the uh, Vibrant Fuchsia next. And for the Vibrant Fuchsia, I'm going to put a little on my dauber, and I'm going to start at the edge of my mushroom and just flick kind of inward to make those edges uh, darker. Now, I will come back around and um, add the edges even darker once I uh, have him die cut out. But then I'm just going to quickly go over, keeping the center fairly light. That way, when I come around at the end and do the edges, I'll have that nice rounded look. Oops, almost wrapped. While I have uh, my vibrant fuchsia out, I'm also going to add just a little bit to her dress. And I kept her dress like darker up around the waistline and then let it be lighter as it comes down. So it never ceases to amaze me that we can get such a beautiful look on our images using just these daubers and inks. So for my greenery, I kept it pretty simple. I just added the vivid chartreuse over the whole thing. So whoops, see that I flipped right off my finger. And same with my leaves down here. These are not, um, and I colored these the same as uh, my dimensional flowers. So the last two colors that I'm going to show you are uh, for my fairy here. And we're going to use the tea rose to add just a little bit of color to her legs and her arms and face. And I did it very, very lightly because um, I didn't really want her to look orange but uh, this was just the color I used to kind of give her just a little bit of color. And then for the blue, I came in with my makeup brush. Y'all know I love to use these sometimes. And I started down at her dress and just kind of pulled out with the, with the ink and that gave me that shadowing that I wanted down in there. And then right here where that one overlaps, I did a little bit there to give some curl to the wings. And that is all I did for her uh, wings. I did forget to mention with the goldenrod. Sylvie, you say it's hot. Oh my, where, where are you, Sylvie? Are you, no, she's not in Canada. I, I'm in Texas, and it's been like 108. It's like crazy hot. <laughs> oh, you're right. Our, our, our fairy should maybe have a tan. Maybe so. I'm picturing this uh, whimsical fairy village as being like cool and moist and in the trees. <laughs> and Hopefully, she's much cooler than we are. <laughs> but there we go. I did add a really dark uh, area of the goldenrod to her little lamp. All right, we're not going to spend much more time on the coloring because I'll, I did do the um, the building of the, the mushroom the same way I did the top. I started with my brown at the edges. I used my um, makeup brushes to do the doors and the windows. And then when it was die cut, I go around the edges. Oh, Sylvia, you're in Nebraska. Is it hot in Nebraska? Surely it's cooler there than it is here. It's just like, it's unnaturally warm here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you all of my colored pieces. So here's the one that I showed you. 
And after I added the coffee color, I blended in just a little bit of the goldenrod just to give that one a little bit of a yellowy uh, look to it. So, oh, yes, I'm almost all of them. They're either from the sunflower. Someone's asking about the stamps I'm using. They are from the mushroom cottage collection. And then I'm using the sunflowers from the sunflower collection. So when the video is over, you can go back to the beginning and rewind there. And I show all of the products there at the beginning that I'm using. But I'll, I'll try to show you as I'm using them. Whoops. There we go. And here are my little mushrooms. Now, one thing you can see is I glittered them very heavily. There we go. So here, all of my my rooftops, I really layered them heavily with the glitter. And, and this particular one, I wanted to tell you the colors that I used. This is a little bit of the Vibrant Fuchsia. And then I went over, even over the top of the Vibrant Fuchsia with the tea rose. And that's how I got that kind of, um, you know, orangey pink color with the, the darker pink little spots on it. Now, for the uh, centers of all of my sunflowers, I use the Vesuvius um, glitter. And they do still have some of that available. If you don't have any of that, uh, I, uh, I would definitely grab some. I, it's my favorite thing to put in the center of my sunflowers. So once my sunflowers came, uh, I die cut them. I went around the edges really heavily with the goldenrod. Then I layer, I put them through the mold face down and then I layered one on top of the other and added the Vesuvius glitter in the center. So here are all of our pieces that we're going to use to decorate our uh, dimensional card. So I'm just going to slide all these back and let's cut our paper. So to make this dimensional card, you're going to need a 12 by 12 piece of white paper. Well, I suppose it could be any color. I'm using white, but you could use any color. And you're also going to need a scoreboard. So your 12 by 12 paper, you're going to cut it in half at the six inches. So you'll have two pieces that are six inch by 12 inch. Then you're going to put it on your scoreboard. And we'll just pretend that my scoreboard is a big one. I didn't pull my big one, but when I made this, I used my big one. But you're going to score at four inches, you're going to score at eight inches, and you're going to score at 10 inches. And I've written it down right here if you want to jot down those dimensions. And this is how you make this style of card. So four, eight, and 10. Let me set that one aside. The other half of your white paper, you're going to have this is all one. You're going to cut off one square that is six by six and set it aside. Yes. And then for your other six by six square, you're going to score it every two inches. So you're going to score it at two and you're going to score it at four. Okay. Okay. So we're all done with our scoring. Hope that uh, was pretty easy. So here's your three pieces. We're going to set these two aside for just a moment and we're going to work with our longest one. And your parts that are two four inches, you're going to fold this one back like that. Then you're going to take this, these four right here and you're going to fold them up like that. Okay, so you're going to have this. Now you're going to take this little part and fold it down. So when you're done, this is what you want to have, a mountain, a valley, and then a little mountain, okay? Now, I'm going to come in with my um, uh, score tool and just uh, burnish that down, but you want to have two mountains, a big one and a small one, just like that, all right? So this is the main base of our card. So the next thing we're going to do is take the next piece that we scored, and you're going to fold this one back behind just like we did the other one. And you're going to fold this one forward just like you did that one. Except there's one less piece. 
And I'm just going to burnish them. Okay, so you have this right here. A mountain and then a little half mountain. Okay. And what we're going to do is, whoops, glue, turn it around. And your little half mountain, you're going to glue it right there. Okay, so you're going to take your half mountain and glue it to the front. So that you now have one big mountain and two small mountains. Okay, so I hope that that is easy to understand. I'm going to go ahead and, whoops, glue my small mountain onto my base card. And there we go. Burnish that down. Okay, so this is what we have so far. So we still have this piece right here. This piece is going to go right inside of your big mountain. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add glue on this piece. And then I'll take this one, put it right down in there, square it up and then burnish it down. Now, it's important that you, if you glue this piece instead, you run the risk of getting glue up on the back. So that's why I glued the base card rather than this. Another thing you want to watch out for is if you put too much glue and it oozes out, you run the risk of, of it gluing shut. So you want to be careful with that too. Hello, Lucille. I'm glad you're here with me. <laughs> Sylvia, yeah, actually, we're only making one card, <laughs> but you do use the whole 12 by 12 sheet to do this. And so now that we have this, this is our main card right here. So this is what you will have with this little piece coming off the top. So this is a kind of a fun way to make a dimensional card, and it's pretty easy to do. So and because it's all kind of six by six and two by six, it makes it real easy to cut your decorative pieces to go on top. No, no fancy measurements. <laughs> I like things that are six by six. <laughs> Okay, so you will need three of these uh, die cut out of white. And these are from our decorative accent piece that I showed you in the beginning. And these were originally made to be like pockets on things. So we're going to put our glue right along where this pocket thing, and then we're going to attach it to the back of each of our mountains. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do that. And it's a pretty fast and simple. I just put the glue right around that whole opening of where our pocket would be. And then I'm just going to center them right there. See how, that, see how that is? Just to give a nice decorative edge to each of our little mountains. Okay. And I like to do this before I... Um, add any of my decorative papers. I suppose if you wanted to put them on the front, you could because your decorative papers are going to go over the top. Um, I just chose to put mine on the back. It really won't matter. Now, if you put them on after the decorative paper, then you're definitely going to want to put them on the back. But uh, since we're doing it before, I suppose you could do them either way. Okay. Now, this one, of course, is going to be right here at the top of our tallest piece. Oops. Yeah. There we go. Didn't get mine centered very well there. Okay, so this is what you should have right now. Kind of look like like this. Okay, so let's set this aside for just a moment and we are going to cut our decorative pieces. So in the Mushroom Cottage paper pad, you have a piece that looks like this. All right. I want this top corner cut to six by six. So these two pieces we can save for later use. Now, if you wanted to use this piece to cut your two by six pieces out of, you could. If you don't want, if you're conserving paper, that would look just fine. Even though it's got decorative pieces and stuff, that, that would look just fine. But I, I thought I might want to use these pretties for another card. So in my scrap box, 
I had a piece of just solid green. So I went ahead and I cut my two, two inch by six inch pieces out of just the solid green. Okay, so that, that's totally up to you how you want to do that. Now for this part, I'm going to glue it on in this um, orientation so that I have some of the pretty flowers up across the top of my card. I thought that just uh, kind of created a pretty canopy for my little uh, village going on here. So now one thing I always like to do is my the edges of my paper. So I'm just going to take my ink pad and run that along the edge. You could, of course, use your dauber for this, but it's just so much faster to just do that. And that gives you, uh, it takes away that white edge, that harsh white edge. Now, the way this is falling down like this, I'm going to show you at the end how we're going to fix that. Again, be careful with your glue that you don't have it oozing out over the edges because you don't want to glue your project closed. So that is my front. So now I want my my other two by six pieces to be right here. Okay. Hello, Lucille. Glad that you could all be here with me today. Here we go. All right. Easy peasy so far. Are you surprised at how easy this is, or is this a style card that you've made before? Let me know there in the, the comments. I had made one of these a long time ago, but it had been a while. I had kind of forgotten, and I was just flipping through uh, Pinterest, and I saw a few of these, and I thought, oh, that would be fun with the Mushroom Village. So... Okay, so now that we have it like this, I wanted to start, I wanted it to look like it was going back. So I put my biggest mushrooms in the very front level and I worked my way back to the smallest mushrooms in the back. And I did that on purpose so that we would have, uh, you know, that look of uh, standing kind of at the beginning of the forest, looking back down into it. So I went ahead and I found my largest mushrooms and I'm going to put them right here on the front. Now, I think on my first one, I did not use a foam behind them. But I think this time I am going to put some foam behind them. So let me grab that. Now, I'm not using a super thick foam. I'm just using the regular 3M foam. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the back. And just position him about maybe right here. And now for this one, I'm going to tuck him in right behind. You do just want to be careful that you're not putting your glue too high up because you don't want to glue your card shut. There we go. All right, now. I'm going to come back with at the end with my glue gun and add my flowers. Oh, Sylvie, it really is easy. If you just take it, you know, one step at a time, it comes together very easily. Sometimes when you look at them all finished and decorated, you think, oh, that has to be that that looks so complicated. But really, when it's step by step, it, it's very easy. So to do my next layer, I'm just going to kind of fold this layer down and I'm going to start positioning my next size mushrooms. Let's see. And I'm going to put them a little higher than I did in my original. So I'm going to, um, I want this mushroom to be just a tad higher than it was before. I thought he sat a little too low in my original version. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue right on the bottom and I'm going to position him. So he's just to the left of this mushroom. Okay. So it kind of to get them positioned, you can close it back up so that you can kind of just see right where, where you want that, okay? 
All right. So now that he's in on this level, I'm going to show you on my original. On this level, I added some sunflowers and some my one of my fence. So again, I'm going to take my little fence. And, and once you get all your pieces made, you may choose to, to make some different pieces than I did. And uh, you can build your village just, you know, however uh, it looks, looks good to you. So I'm going to just put our little fence right in here. And then for these, I'm going to put one big, one of the big ones, and then one of the small ones. Again, trying to keep my glue low enough that it won't go out the back. But from here on out, we're really uh, just creating a little scene. Okay, my, my big one gets kind of hidden when you fold it down, but when it's standing out, you, you can see that more, you know, that it still creates that dimension back there. So I still like him in there. And now I'm going to add a little one over here where it can be seen a little better. There we go. Now my grass pieces, I'm going to come in and add those at the end when I do my sunflowers. So this is what I have so far. And for my next layer, for my two smallest ones, I'm going to kind of close it and position those with, um, with it closed so that you can see them more. And I'm raising them up just a bit from my original. I thought they were a little hidden, so I'm raising them up just a bit. And there's another one with a little orange roof. Here he is. And I'm going to put this one right next to it. Kind of about like that, I think. How's that look? I like it. All right. And I think this one, I'm going to add a little bit of foam, just like I did on this one in the front. And then this one, I'm going to tuck under the edge and glue it down, just like on the front. All right. There's the beginnings of our scene. We've got all of our mushrooms placed. Let's see. Ooh, Sylvie had a great idea. She said maybe we could make this Christmas. Oh, you just made my brain start like going. Um, you know, in the camper set, they have those uh, Christmas lights to go on the camper. Wouldn't that be fun to add them to our little uh, mushrooms? Oh, somebody's got to do that. That would be fun. And some of the little pine trees in different sets, add some pine trees and Christmas trees in here. I may have to give that a go. That That's a really fun idea, Sylvie. <laughs> Sylvia. I see it's Sylvia. Sorry, I thought that was me on the end. It's an A. Okay, next part. Um, back here on this back one, I'm going to go ahead and add some sunflowers and some of my fence, okay? But from here on out, like I said, we're, we're really just building up the scene. So, you know, every scene doesn't come out looking exactly the same. I'm going to turn it just so I can kind of see, get that level there. And on, on my next little piece, I'm going to overlap them a bit and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to trim off those edges. There we go. I, I did, if I'd put that over, it probably would have fit the whole thing, but whoops. There we go. And I'm just going to set that so it's right up against the edge. There we go. Now I'm going to close that and add my next sunflower. Oops. All right. I like the way that's coming together. Okay. Now I have some of these mushrooms and in my um, original I didn't think you could see them very well, but you can cut these mushrooms apart and you can see I glittered those really heavily and, and you can tuck in some of these mushrooms in some of these little places where you feel like there just needs to be a little something, something. 
Oh, your brothers call you Sylvie? That's, that's, it's good when brothers have a, a nice nickname for you. <laughs> There we go. So it's and and adding those mushrooms, it just gives you some of that look when it's opened, when you're more looking at it straight on. So I'm going to add just one more little uh, pop of mushroom. Let's see here. I think I'm going to cut this pink one off because I just need a little bit. And I'm going to tuck those in next to my orange mushroom right over here and I'm going to kind of tuck it back behind just to kind of fill that out there all right all right I think that we're ready to add our fairy now the way I added our fairy is with our acetate okay because I want her to appear like she's kind of flying above the scene so let me this is a piece of one of the packagings that uh, I've been cutting on for a long time. It, I mean, it'll take me, I mean, I can make a lot of cards with just one of these. So if you want to sacrifice one of your uh, plastic packaging, this uh, is nice, thick, and heavy. It's a good way to, uh, you know, add these kind of dimensional things. And, and you don't have to buy any other product. Now, I'm going to cut it in half. This one is maybe about, I don't know, four, maybe five inches long, but I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to put them together and that'll make it even stronger so that my little fairy uh, doesn't, uh, you know, flop around too much. And the best way that I have found is with a double-sided adhesive. And I'm going to just use this little narrow one. And I'm going to add just a little bit at the bottom and a little bit at the top. And this doesn't have to be super long because she's not flying too high above our, our buildings here or our mushrooms. So, yes, I did. Um, I didn't talk about that. But, yeah, I did use my uh, stylus to, you know, give shape to all of my different pieces. You know, I went ahead and pressed in the center of my flowers, all of the tops of my mushrooms. I kind of gave them some shape. And yeah, that's just kind of something I, I almost always do to all of my different images. So, yeah, I didn't talk about that. But yes, uh, definitely. I, I put a shape to everything. Good question. <laughs> sometimes sometimes I, I forget a step in there. So, OK, we're going to go ahead and layer this up. Okay, so the next thing you want on your acetate, you want the tape to be on the top because we're going to add her on one end and then we're going to stick this on the back of our board. So you need the tape on the back. Or, sorry, you need the tape on the top. So that's the front of both of your, uh, the top and the bottom. I'm going to add her just kind of right up there at the top. So there we have our girl. And I'm going to kind of lay her right where I want her to be. And then press down. And boom, there she is. Whoops, I got her a little too low. Her legs are behind. There we go. A little bit higher. There we go. She's actually attached this time to the back of this uh, mushroom, but uh, you know, you just want to kind of position her where you want her on your card. And there she is, our pretty fairy flying by. All right. So the last thing that we need to do here is turn on our glue gun and add our field of sunflowers. I love the sunflowers for several different reasons. They come in uh, such a wide variety of useful sizes. You know, they, they uh, you can make small ones, mediums. I like it that in other sets, I have ones that look like this that I can use with them. 
And I also like how easy they are to put together. Oh, good. Um, Marjorie says she wants to give this one a try. It It's really fun. I like it. And here, there is a little trick at the end that I want to show you. So let's get our sunflowers added and our bumblebees. And then we'll uh, go on. So I'm going to turn this on real quick. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Sometimes I hold it so long, I, I turn it on, then turn it back off all at the same time. All right. I think I may take a little bumblebee and put him right here and put him on acetate as well. I didn't do that on my first one, but I thought that that would look fun. So let's uh, do that while we're waiting on that glue gun. Now this one, I don't need to double up because uh, the bumblebee is not going to be very heavy. So I can just uh, put him on very, uh, just all in just one piece of acetate will be fine. So tell me in the chat, have you guys uh, been having the 100, 105 degree weather like Texas? I know Florida's been really hot and uh, really even up north, my mom in Indiana had had some 90 degree weather. All right, we're going to add our bumblebee and then I'm just going to add him right here. Yeah, I like that. Okay. All right, so now I'm just going to start adding some sunflowers in and around my house. My houses, there we go. And I made several uh, sunflowers. I didn't add glitter to my sunflowers. Oh, you all are just running with this idea. Dragonflies and butterflies. Oh, yeah, they would all look great on this card. You could pull in so many collections with this idea. Now, wherever you position your flowers, just make sure that your glue is not uh, going through because we don't want to glue our levels shut. Hi, Lorna. Okay, there we go. Well, do not worry about being late. I love it when you're here to craft along with me, but I also love it that all of them are there for replay anytime. So when I look at it like this, I've got one more little sunflower and I think I'm going to put him right back here behind my mushrooms back there. So I'm going to add just a little bit of this glue and slide him right down behind this one. There we go. All right. The final thing now. I'm just going to add some of this greenery in and around just to give it some uh, some leaves. I didn't like the big mushroom or the big sunflower leaves. I thought they were kind of just too big for our project. So I'm just going to add little pieces of this. So you can kind of see how I did that on my original. I just uh, cut these apart and tucked in some leaves here and there to uh, be my sunflower leaves. There we go. So, all right, you can kind of see how that all comes together. And I also added my other little bumblebees. I have two little bumblebees and you can certainly pop these up. I put one over here. Perhaps the fairy's collecting uh, bumblebees to put in her little lantern or, or lightning bugs to put in her little lantern. Who knows? And then I put one kind of over on this side. Now, I didn't add a sentiment to this yet. Um, on my original, I did leave some space to put a sentiment. Like right over here, you could put a happy birthday or something like that or up in here. I didn't so much on this one, but uh, I just love it. It's such a cute little scene. Uh, you know, you could even add like a little uh, post and sign with a little uh, uh, greeting on it. There's so, so many ideas. Okay, now the one last thing I wanted to tell you about. When you leave it like this, 
it stands up just fine, but sometimes this little back piece wants to flop out like that. Now, if, if you set it real still, it does just fine. But what I did on my original is on the back right here, I added this little piece right here. So I'm going to show you real quick how to do that. And that just makes it so it doesn't fall down like that. And you just need a piece of scrap paper. And you're going to cut it to, let's see, maybe, uh, let's go uh, three inches, maybe three and a half. Let's go three and a half inches. So that's why it's two in between. Then you want to grab your uh, scoreboard again. So it's three and a half inches. So you're going to do a half inch on each end. And then you're going to do in the middle. Let's see, two and a half would be, nope. Yeah, in the middle there. Okay, so you're going to have it in half. And then both of these, you're going to fold up. Okay, so you're going to have something that looks like this. That, that kind of makes sense there. Yeah. Now you're going to add your glue to the two little flaps that you folded up. All right. Now bring it together like this. Oops, wrong one. And now you're just going to fold these back, these little pieces that you put glue on, fold them back. And then back there on your very back level, you're going to put it right in the middle down at the base of your card, like line up the edge at the base of your card. You see that? And then just let it close shut and press down. Okay, hopefully that's had time to dry. And what that's going to do, it's going to create you a little hinge back here so that that uh, stands up well. Okay. Now you won't have, this won't flop down anymore. It, it's, it's kind of, it's got a stopper here that stops it from, from flopping down. So I just love how this one turned out. Very fun. I had so much fun bringing these together. I did put a little bit of um, shine on my flowers on this one and I colored it a little bit heavier. So one's got a little more of a muted and one's got a little more bright. And I think I like the bright one. Very fun. Yes, a little welcome to the neighborhood sign. So you're just filled with great ideas today. Okay, I'm going to switch my camera back. All right, I hope that you enjoyed making this mushroom cottage with me. I love all the great ideas, and uh, I'm going to have to try some of them. And, and if any of you try them, do post your pictures there on the Facebook group so that, so that we can all... Uh, take a look at those ideas. So, all right. Thanks so much for being here with me. I do want to let you know that for this month, if you um, spend a hundred dollars on the website, you can pick out a free paper pad. So, uh, you know, we're all kind of preserving this paper to make it last as long as possible. So the more paper pads you can pick up, the better. So there's also more things being added to the warehouse clearance all the time. So if there's any product that you've missed and you want to make sure you get, you want to go back regularly and check that out. So, all right. I have had a wonderful time crafting with you. Thanks so much for being here with me. And I will see you again next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>